Do you have like an agenda or objectives or ambition for your music? Like say when you're collaborating with someone who's like high profile in a more, <laughs> um, I don't know, I want to say commercial or conventional way. Yeah. I, know, I know Willow Smith is a switched on human being. Um, mm. But like, uh, like, do you care? You know, do you like, do you, do you have ego around that kind of thing? Is it something that's appealing to you? What did, is it hard to have personal ambition if you live a life of spiritual devotion? I mean, this is a thing that I, like, I'm finding, I'm learning about myself because I did go to like a, to normal schools. I didn't have any explicit spirituality in my childhood mm. other than that my mum was very much love and kindness, love and kindness mm. in a very sort of, you know, that was who she is. Um, so like, so like for me, I it was very like when the idea of, um, fulfillment through pursuit of individual goals when that idea was when I sort of came across that idea I thought oh right that's yeah I get it I'll, I'm down mm -hmm. with that you know like whether it was like being in school plays or the, in my case the pursuit of sort of fame and money and then other forms of addiction and attachment you know mm -hmm. I, I and now that I'm sort of coming down from that and sort of waking up for that which has been sort of a pretty slow process for me I still feel the echo of it and like the like, a, you know, like when people you hear tales of people that have had a limb amputated, still feeling mm. that I still feel like the limb of my own sort of ambition and desire. And it requires quite a lot of me to m maintain a spiritual focus, particularly around the um, intentions of my creativity and my attitudes towards success do you f find it seductive or distracting in any way i think that i mean for me personally i think that it is, it's always there um i can't say it's something that's co consciously and intentionally being like a driving factor but i think you know the ego always wants as you said appreciation and validation and praise and things like that so whenever there's opportunity for that i mean I do deal with that, I think, every time that I take that position of leading Kirtan, because people are listening to me, um, and I'm supposed to be doing it just in a mood of service, but naturally I'm hearing my own voice, and there's that natural voice of, you know, self-consciousness, and, oh, did I sing that right? And there's a constant negotiation between that spiritual self and the, the kind of ego that just wants to, everyone to say, oh, you're so fantastic. Um, and that's something, yeah, something very real for me. And I would say I've sort of shied away from being in some in some ways. I've shied away from being more seen and heard and well known. It's it's taken me a long time to accept that it's a it's a good thing to share something good. It's it's good to go out there and 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 put it out there. So I think um, in you you asked about agenda. I think. It, it's very fulfilling and satisfying for me to know that something that I create is helpful to someone. And so many people, um, you know, I remember when I was young, I would, I would um, I remember being on the school bus in secondary school and like writing lists of things that I think I want to be when I grow up and just had like, I can remember like three columns of different things. And over the years, I'd sort of scratch one out and, you know, um, but I think, the, the the core thing that came out was I, I did want to feel a sense of purpose and meaning and that I'd done something which helped others and, and, and also used my abilities, my, my nature. So um, the agenda, I'd say, uh, is, you know, what, what's most fulfilling is to is to help people and serve people. <clears throat> people tell me like, oh, you know that the music touches their hearts or that they they sleep better or they played it as they came in on their wedding and that that sort of thing is 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 really sweet and lovely and i do have to i do have to also negotiate sort of with my my ego that it's it's about me you know they're they're saying oh and you're this and you're that um but uh i think i mean i i, I was you know reflecting many many years ago when I kind of accepted to to go down this path of just making more recorded things and just putting them out there that um the more that I get in the way of what 
I'm trying to what I'm trying to offer, the the less effective the whole thing will be because it's more you know more about me than anything in, in that sense. Yeah, it's taken me quite a lot of therapy and to get to that point of recognizing that the only power I have in my own life is the power to ruin it. You know, like, and the, like <laughs> if I just stay out of my own life, <laughs> then it will be yeah. managed very well on my behalf. Will you sing in this environment? Will you sing in this podcast? Or is that not your thing at all? If it may, I once tried to get Noel Gallagher to play a guitar and he did do it, but after he done it, I thought it was the wrong thing to do because he <laughs> seemed seemed to resent it. He sang a song once and, and that had an audience and was on stage. It wasn't just sat as you are currently between two bookshelves. I'd be happy to, whatever you like. Oh, yeah, sing some stuff, will you? Sing some things. Okay. All right. Um, all right, let me have some tea. Just to juice myself up. <laughs> Peppermint tea is what we need. Govinda Jaya Jaya Gopala Jaya Jaya Radha Ramana Hare Govinda Jaya Jaya Govinda Jaya Jaya Gopala Jaya Jaya Radha Ramana Hari Govinda Jaya Jaya You got a pretty amazing voice when you sing I don't want to stop singing Oh <laughs> I remember of course um you sang um I hope you sang at our house one time. I can't remember like, if it was a wedding or a christening. Maybe it was a christening. Both. Or... It was both. So you're always singing. <laughs> uh, the one I remember especially is, oh yeah, that was at the, uh, our wedding, me and Laura's wedding. I remember being very, very captivated and transported. And just then when you sang, and I suppose it's quite explicit there sort of the some of the central symbols in the uh, in your tradition are about the power of music and the power of vibration and its transcendent quality and like you said in when we were talking before the power of art to bypass the intellect that tool that we have that is so efficient and great but also perhaps mm. hems us in to particular perspectives i felt very very carried away by that it was very very beautiful thanks for doing that mm, although I it has that day it was lovely it was a lovely day our wedding wasn't it <laughs> it was amazing your family have become quite integral to the spiritual progress of the brand family oh. conduct <laughs> bring in music and ceremony Will you tell us about a little bit about your uh, father? Because he's like, as best as I can understand, a kind of priest. Yes, he is. He's a priest and a teacher, a writer, and um, yeah, he he's he's been doing that for many many years. Um, he's done I don't know how many hundreds of weddings and funerals, and there's different rites of passage within a tradition that are marked. So I, I love I love the way that he does those things because he though he chants the traditional prayers and mantras, he definitely has a way of um, translating it and making it very accessible for everyone present. And he often does <laughs> he often does um, weddings with, you know, unusual kind of combinations of people and marriage of different cultures and things. So, yeah. He yeah, because I remember Trevor Moyer at our um, wedding, like we we had a sort of a more I say conventional, but I'm I don't know well, what which would be more conventional. Really, it seems like an odd word to use these days. But we had like a <laughs> sort of uh, Church of England type wedding at a little church, and then like uh, your father conducted a ceremony, and it was very. Uh, conversational colloquial and a lot of people who had no experience of Harry Krishnas except for I would imagine they would see it in the cliched way of airports or up and down Oxford Street yeah. which was indeed my first encounter with uh, the Krishna consciousness movement 
like them a, a few more than one several people said like um that felt very connected to me very very real i some like mm. you know as we were discussing the sacred before if the sacred is going to be <laughs> elevated so that it is once again relevant and present in all of our lives so if it is ever to replace the systems that deny it and have um uh, overwhelmed it then we need to be able to reach people that have been educated in an entirely different tradition in an entirely different um language and like to be able to reach to convey spirituality conversationally not make it sound either abstract or irrelevant in some other ways is mm. very very great gift i think